So what is central sensitization? That is definitely something that should be referred to a pain expert first. Now, again, when I say pain expert, I don't even know what the definition of that is, because uh, it's so hard to define that. But they should be seeing someone who's an expert in everything I've just outlined. Okay? Central sensitization, as we discussed in the very beginning, increased responsiveness of nociceptive neurons to their normal input in the central nervous system, in the and the spinal cord. The wind-up phenomenon refers to something that happens um, centrally. And what happens is those neurons stay upregulated. They continue to fire even though the traumatic event has stopped. They, they don't get that, the message. They don't get the memo that, hey, buddy, the, the injury stopped. You know, you should stop hurting. They don't get that message. And it stays in that persistent feedback loop. Okay? So, so, so the nerves keep saying, hey, I'm hurting. The brain keeps saying, oh my god, we're having a traumatic injury. Let's start telling the extremity to stop. So it increases the sensitization, but the nerves wound up, so the nerve keeps on sending those signals back and keeps on sending more and more signals back, uh, and it becomes hyper-reactive. Uh, so you have central versus peripheral. You also have organic versus inorganic. Organic pain is real tissue damage. Inorganic pain is the central sensitization. So back, back, way back in 1644, Descartes actually described this phenomenon. So 500 years ago, I mean, it's amazing that you know, we still don't understand it. But he actually said, hey, listen, you know, someone gets stubbed in their toe and, and their brain reacts to it. Their spinal cord and brain reacts to it. But now we actually have data to help support that. What you can see here, um, and I'm not going to um, uh, go into every detail um, that, we, that we see on this image here, um, simply because um, the Oscar judges over there have already put up their time card. So, <laughs> yeah, but I'm, gonna, but I'm gonna go over like every other celebrity and diva does, okay? Uh, so I hope you don't mind. I did start late. I did start late. Um, but so I, what I will do though, is I won't go over every little detail here, but there are a lot of details here. Uh, but what is happening is there's something critical that everyone needs to understand. It's called brain reorganization, okay? Or cortical reorganization. That is what's fundamentally happening with every injury. With every type of pain, there's cortical or brain reorganization. Now, to put that into fancy little, you know, or non-fancy terms, it means that your brain remembers things. There are memories forming, right? Every, every experience you have, even this one, hopefully this is not painful, but if it is, you're forming a memory. Gee, that was painful. I'll never go to a lecture again. Uh, you're forming memories. And based on those memories, also called experiences, it forms, it shapes who you are as a person. This is why it's so fundamentally important to understand who that person is. Because you're going to be averse to certain things, you're going to like certain things, and that happens no matter what you're doing. It doesn't even have to be a painful condition. Every experience, there's cortical reorganization, which shapes who you are as a human being. Um, typically, central sensitization is most mediated by something called the NMDA receptor. And some of you have probably heard of the NMDA receptor. Uh, that lives in, tissue, in all the central tissues, brain, spinal cord. When the NMDA receptors are hyperstimulated, that's when we start seeing the wind-up phenomenon in the central sensitization. And ketamine, by, uh, by the way, um, works on the NMDA receptors, but it does so much more than that. It works on about 10 different pathways. I'll quickly talk about that. Um, so again, central sensitization goes way beyond, though, just looking at the NMDA receptors. It has to deal with what, what I just said before. Memories, okay? Pain is an experiential process. And the memories that are formed when someone has an injury, unfortunately in some patients, causes a reactive process that we can see on functional MRIs and we can see with different objective tests and we can actually physically see the brain reorganizing itself. So what are we trying to do then ultimately is to reorganize those pathways. So the NMDA receptor plays a role. Uh, gene alteration is affected when central sensitization occurs, and that occurs in the dorsal root ganglion. Decreased inhibition occurs. Microglial activation occurs. And then finally, thalamic and somatosensory cortex changes occur. So again, a lot of changes in the spinal cord, a lot of changes in the brain. What are the different types of central sensitization? This is just a, a partial list. Anxiety chronic pain in general, okay, any type of chronic pain can lead to central sensitization. CRPS, RSD, depression, fibromyalgia, headaches, 
opiate-induced hyperalgesia. Opiate-induced hyperalgesia is when you become more sensitized to pain when you take opiate medications. So people taking opiate medications for their pain, not realizing that some of those opiates are actually causing more sensitization. Horrible feedback loop. And by the way, that doesn't include things like dependence and tolerance. Those are completely separate issues. Phantom limb pain and PTSD. Again, more neurophysiology of the central nervous system and, and central sensitization. We won't get into all of these again because of time, but I do want to point out what, this is the pathway of what, it, what happens. So you have a nociceptive transmission. Typically you'll have you know, a pain signal. It'll, it'll get processed. It'll go to the brain. You'll handle it appropriately. Done. But what happens when that doesn't happen? You start seeing acute sensitization both peripherally and centrally where those gates stay open. The wind-up starts. You know, just keep saying more and more pain, more and more pain. Then you have late central desensitization where this, as you can see, becomes just this, this horrible sort of feedback loop that just doesn't stop. And then finally, you see disinhibition. You see complete disinhibition, which is essentially nothing's really communicating with anything anymore. You know, you're just having pain. And then sometimes just random pain in different areas because everything's disinhibited. Things don't make sense here. Everything's short-circuited, that's the best way of putting it. So we won't go over all this either uh, for interest of time, but what I do want to um, point out, these are functional MRI um, images pointing out different stages of chronic pain, different stages of central sensitization. And you can see you know, um, how a lot of these images don't look the same, and there's a reason for that. Those images are representing different types of, of uh, chronic pain and central sensitization. This next one actually breaks it down into what we see. So for example, with low back pain, we'll see central sensitization. Again, central sensitization is what happens when the brain becomes hyperreactive to a problem. So if you have low back pain that hasn't been treated well, you're going to slowly become more and more sensitized to that. Why? Because the brain's trying to protect your lower back. It's going to say, hey, buddy, stop injuring your lower back. Let me make it a little more sensitive, just to remind you that we don't want you to you know, do squats with uh, 200 pounds or something. Um, so lower back pain, you'll start seeing this increased um, you know, uh, activity or even decreased activity. It depends on which area of the brain we're looking at. And each condition, this is what's really interesting, each condition is kind of like a fingerprint. Each condition has very specific um, uh, images. So there's something called brain mapping that we can do, where we can, we can literally uh, uh, identify what condition that patient might be predisposed to based on these kind of images. Osteoarthritis, different than lower back pain. post neuralgia, as you can see, different than lower back pain, different than osteoarthritis. And pelvic pain, again, different in, in, in its own way. CRPS, if we use that as a model of central sensitization, we can actually see some, some very significant changes on functional MRI. This is a you know, healthy subject, healthy meaning someone who doesn't suffer from uh, CRPS. And then you have a patient who has CRPS. And look at the differences in hyperstimulation as well as hypostimulation. And again, these are kind of fingerprinted. You could, you could, you could take a, a, a many CRPS patients and, and do functional MRI imaging, and you'll see very similar fingerprinting, very similar areas of hyper and hyposensitization. We have a look at a time scale. We look at brain reorganization. We can see, look at this image. You don't need an MD to tell me that this does not look like this, does not look like this, right? Right? Well, you don't need an MD to do that, but why in the world is it that MDs don't know this? I don't know. I'm going to show you. I want to get to the last slide because I'm going to show you a comment that an MD made about central sensitization. That MD doesn't, that MD thinks that all these images look the same. So just, just, just keep that in mind, okay? Keep this slide in mind in the last slide. Uh, we published an article in 2008. We're actually first uh, to describe this connection between the stellate ganglion and central sensitization. We actually showed that when you inject the stellate ganglion way in the neck here, why in the world would injecting something in the neck affect the brain? Well, it's because there's a direct connection between the stellate ganglion and nerves that are in the amygdala, the hypothalamus, and the insular cortex. And what we did is we sort of reset those neural inputs and sort of, you know, again, stop that hyperalgesia, that, uh, that, that hypersensitive process going on. So when you can describe the mechanism of action, you know, again, it doesn't matter what word you use, science is, is supreme. So what are the treatments for central sensitization and CRPS? Physical therapy, mirror box, graded motor imagery, tactile uh, discrimin uh, discrimination training, sensory discrimination training, neuropsych, uh, EEG biofeedback, uh, also called brain mapping, cognitive behavioral therapy, relaxation techniques, and hypnosis. When we look at medication treatments, uh, we have alpha and beta adrenergic 
uh, compounds. We have anti-inflammatories, bisphosphonates to help with bone density, Botox, calcium regulating drugs, uh, GABA analogs, ketamine, uh, local anesthetics, opiates, SNRIs, and vasodilators. Treatments that are interventional for CRPS and central sensitization include epidural blockade, intravenous immunoglobulin, intravenous regional sympathetic blockade, ketamine infusions, selective sympathetic nerve blocks, and spinal cord stimulators.